What's up guys? You live with WCB Albany 90.9 with your homegirl DJ Peaches. It's a special show today. This is my first and only summer show. Never again. But we got my favorite musical guest, Medici, the group that nobody can find on Google. What's up y'all? How y'all doing? We're doing good. You just solo today? Just solo? Nah, it's Ray Medici in the building. You already know. We got uh, Joanna Pauline wow. in the building as well. Mm -hmm. How it feels to be here? Feels great. How you like Albany so far? It's very green. That's different. Okay. Well, I mean, what do people usually say? <laughs> it's quiet. Okay. Okay, okay so we're going to get into the <laughs> interview. What is Medici? So Medici is a collective. It's a music collective that was started about three years ago to build a platform for independent artists. And um, essentially everybody in the group has kind of had a dream of taking their music career to the next level. And then it just kind of became bigger than that. It became a music collective slash company slash management group. And um, it's still growing. Okay, so you said it's like it's a collective? Yeah. Did y'all all come back separately or did y'all start it together? So originally it started with me and Young Leon, another artist in the group, and then we all kind of found each other because we actually all, we came from SUNY Albany, we went to SUNY Albany together. Um, I was on OC with Young Leon, and then um, Siren, another artist, and then uh, Shayna, she was just in our network. We all were kind of like friends, and then it kind of started organically after we all were done with school. Okay, that sounds like we're going to get a started band. You play drums, I play the guitar, to make a sing, okay. Now tell us a little bit about yourself. We need to get to know you. Last interview we had, you didn't really speak that much. So now I'm just going to focus on you. Who are you, Ray? Who are you? Okay, so um, I'm Ray Medici. Essentially, I am a singer. I'm an artist in general. I do rap as well. I kind of mix myself into different genres of music. But um, I'm essentially just a kid who had a dream. You know what I mean? I dreamed of doing music, and then I put out some records a couple of years back, just singles, just to kind of test the waters, and then they actually just started going. So I just kind of just continued with my music career, and it's be became something now. Okay, what's your distinct sound as you an artist by yourself that's different from the group? Well, I would say that I focus a lot on alternative <laughs> R&B, R&B pop, and then I mix a little bit of influences from hip hop as well. Okay. So who do you respect now in the music game? Like which artist now? It's like on your phone, iPhone, let's go iTunes. Who you listen to now? I wouldn't say that I specifically listen to certain like a, cer a certain person. I kind of am just inspired by all artists, like artists in general. I feel like I can't single out a specific artist that I listen to, but I do like listening to people like uh, Russ specifically because of not just the music itself but also the message that he sends to artists which is that whether you're an independent artist or you're just a starting out whatever it is that you can do it you just need to kind of focus on like figuring out how you're going to do it and figuring out what your sound is and then kind of just essentially being yourself and not letting the industry change you. So that's, I'd say Russ is one person that I, I really like to listen to. Just because of that. Strictly off of not just the music, but the message. Okay, going off that, who would you like to collaborate with? I mean, I wouldn't say I'd like to collaborate specifically with anybody right now. Um, <clears throat> mainly, I would probably collaborate with other artists that are in the music or Medici Collective just because there's so many different people that are in the collective that people don't even know about yet that um, essentially I want to collaborate with them so that they can hear their sound and, and see what they have to offer. How many people's in the collective? It's a lot. It's, it's <laughs> More than over, like 50? Over, over, maybe over 10. Oh. Yeah. But not like immediate artists. It's more so people who are being helped by people in, on our team. So it's more so um, the people that are, are you're going to hear now are people that are putting out new tracks. Um, Joanna, she's actually with me right now. She's one of the new artists that we have that's about to start dropping her singles and um, showcasing to the world what she has to offer. 
Okay, speaking about that, I know before you came back, um, when you came in October last year, you had the two singles, Waves and Yo Mama. I was a big fan of Waves. That was a nice vibe. So how do you feel about like the big numbers and all the positivity you got around those two tracks? I feel like Waves was, it was a great record. Um, the one thing about that record that, that I like is that it was able to um, essentially help me access a bigger audience to kind of have more people know about Medici itself because off of that song we were able to tour. Um, we actually had a, something called the Renaissance Tour last summer and we were able to tour from New York all the way down to Miami just off of the strength of that song and, and people who like listening to the song. But um, in terms of the numbers, it, it did well. I don't really, I didn't even really expect it to do that. It just kind of happened. But um, I'm thankful because it's kind of opened up other doors as well. And um, yeah, that's Waves is a great record. The Yo Mama record, I'd say that that record was also kind of a, um, that one was also unplanned, but it just kind of happened because um, one of the engineers that uh, I worked with on the record, um, his name is Chef Pascal, he actually was part of like the OVO top season team and he was from my area. So it organically came together just from being in the same area and then him seeing I was doing my thing. So um, I'm thankful for the, the record. I, I feel like I still have a lot more to come and um, I'm excited for that. Those was two distinct tracks with two different genres. Waves was more than Summer Fail. And then your mom was like, I don't know, that was my workout song. It was on my playlist for workout. Okay, so we I know you was telling me you did a show for the Marcus Garvey family and they recognized your music. How does that feel? That's like a big honor. It feels good. I mean, that show essentially was a, um, it was focused on something called the 33 Dynasties Library. Uh, essentially that library is the first a to Z African library and um, the money for that show actually went towards proceeds to open up the first A to Z African library so I was just honored that they asked me to host the show and I actually got to perform some unreleased music uh, I have a record called Take the Throne that you guys are all going to hear really mm -hmm. soon but um, and it's actually my first record that I was able to uh, rap in French which nobody's really doing that at the moment so, um, I mean, I was just kind of thankful that they recognize the music that I'm putting out and that um, I'm getting that recognition. So can you rap a little bit of your track first here? I'm going I'm to save that for you. You going to save, save it, it for me? Like, <laughs> not even one line? I just it. want a line of French. I'm not going to understand okay. it at all, though, but so one line. One of the lines I had in the <laughs> record, um, it was, Nous sommes, Nous sommes les meliers, il est temps prouvé. And um, essentially, it's saying it's time for me to prove that it's my moment and it's our moment. And I was talking to just artists in general and the French public, the, the Haitian public. I'm Haitian and, and Dominican. So I was kind of talking to different audience and audiences in general and kind of just telling them that it's time to prove that it's our moment and that um, we can do it. So that's just like a little, I'll give you a one liner. That's that, was, that, that was a one liner. Yeah. I'm glad you explained it because yeah. I will have to Google Translate it and that would yeah. be a lot of work. Okay, so have you collaborated with any SUNY Albany alum? Yeah, actually for that show that we did for the, um, the it was called the, the African Eclipse Gala. I actually did that show with DJ Scarface and um, uh, Jalisa Fontaine. She uh, went to Albany as well. And uh, we actually worked on that show together. So um, that was pretty dope just kind of getting to work with them because um, they're they're doing their thing. DJ Scarface is killing it on DJing. Jalisa has her business, the, the Melinda Vision, which is also opening up opportunities for businesses and stuff like that. And she um, led the uh, promotion and people knowing about the event. So that was pretty dope. That I can't say much. That's like impressive. Okay, so what is next for you? So what's next for me? Um, I'm actually about to put out a project, my first body of work. It's called House of Medici, and uh, it's House of Medici Volume 1. Essentially, it's kind of me talking about what Medici is, what I believe is, um, it's kind of like a introduction into, like, the House of Medici, which the House of Medici is, is um, the art, 
the what we stand for, how we stand for um, exposing different types of art to the world, and then uh, kind of just royalty in, in essence of like every artist is royal. That's that's the message that I'm trying to portray to the world, and uh, also kind of just to show people my journey because I feel like I've been. I've been working on so many different things that I think it's time that people kind of see the journey that I've been on and what I'm trying to bring out to the world. Okay. So can you explain the role of the New York Performing Arts Academy had on your career? Well, they actually kind of, I would say they put things in perspective for me. Uh, essentially, the New York Performing Arts Academy, they're a, um, it's a school for uh, people who want to learn like vocal classes, dance classes, acting classes from like some of the best people in the world. And um, like their dance t- teachers that we're actually working with, like they've worked with like Chris Brown, Usher. Tiana Taylor. Yeah, Tiana Taylor. Um, so getting a chance to learn from people who have worked with people at that level, it kind of opened my eyes in terms of how do I build a real set? Because originally when I started music, I just kind of thought I could like finesse it and pick up the mic and then just get on there and then you know my song so say the word you know what I mean the mindset so when I when I really got a chance to um work with the school they kind of showed me what it takes to make a set a production because um essentially that's what they focus on is is they they give you the foundation like I take vocal classes I take acting classes I take dance classes and they're giving me that foundation so that I can perform in front of 80,000 people and that I can give them something different than me just walking up to them and, and expecting them to know the words. But even something like having um, at my last show, the uh, the gala, I actually had uh, another uh, SUNY alumni, uh, Janelle, she actually played violin at the show. So uh, she played violin and I was able to coordinate with her on um, different movements that she was doing throughout the show, and I was able to incorporate that into my set, which my dream is to, um, in when I start doing festival performances, I wanna incorporate an orchestra into my set and have like maybe five or six violinists and dancers incorporated. So they kind of just showed me how to add on to my set and take things to a, a next the next level, essentially. You still enrolled in the academy now? Yeah. Okay. And they and they actually um which is pretty cool. They they um they have an artist development program. And um what they did is essentially they started their own record label under Universal and uh, Interscope Records. And essentially they what they do is they train talent from the ground up and then they bring them to that next level so that when they're ready, um they'll present them to the higher higher level labels and stuff like that. So um, I actually got a chance to actually help them build that up. Not only just be an artist, but help them on the business end because those are things that I'm, I'm interested in. Can you go more a little bit into the process of like if people want to go to the New York, um, New York Performing Arts Academy? Like I know you got to do an um, audition. So how did you like, what was your process for you going in auditioning? Can you explain more on that? So it actually wasn't an, an audition. What happened was we had a show at SOB's um, it was me and um, some other members in the, in the collective, uh, Young and Young Leon. And um, at that time, when um, we were just doing shows, kind of building, like we started out doing 50 people shows, then we did 100 person shows, then we did 150, then we did 250. And then at that time, SOBs, we had about 350 plus people come out to see us perform. And um, the owner of the New York Performing Arts Academy, he was actually at the school. And, and he was actually at the, the show and uh, he watched all of our sets and he saw the, um, the potential of what, what we could do to take it to the next level. So it really wasn't like an audition. It was kind of like he just like saw us, he liked what we were doing music wise. And then from there, he gave us the opportunity to take our artistry to the next level. So at that, after that, we just all kind of migrated and went back to school that that mindset which was different for me because I was out of school for like three four years and the next thing I know I'm in a dance class they had me doing ballet like they had me acting doing all these different things that um like I never was exposed to before so it, it kind of helped me take my artistry to that that next level mm. that's it's called people in surprising places wow yeah 
Okay, so I know you do a lot of charity work. So um, you're very charity oriented. Why? Well, I, I think it's something that we actually learned from the academy because back before the school had its foundation and, and had so many students enrolled, um, how they got the word out of what they were doing was through charities, um, whether it was like soup kitchens or um, giving back to the community, like any type of charity, they just focused all their energy towards that. And um, it manifested into something great, which is a school that, that kids can go to, to to learn how to truly be an artist. So when we started sitting and learning from the owner of the school, uh, his name is John Stepanian, um, he kind of just taught us that it's important to give back because when you give back, you're giving the opportunity to other people. And um, whatever I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in whatever you put out into the world, you're going to get it back tenfold. So we started giving back. We actually, right after that, um, sh that, that time where we got enrolled into the school, we created something called a charity tour. And um, we actually performed across New York State at different like uh, private schools, hospitals. We had workshops. We actually had a workshop at um, the Dream Club in Albany uh, for Salvation Army. And um, we just kind of were trying to figure out how we could give back however we could. And, and um, honestly, I think the school passed that mindset on to us. So I know you said that the school passed the mindset. So you got, do you have any big like project for like charity in your mind or in the works? Well, we actually do. So um, I can't really okay. speak too much on it because it's, it's not fully it's not fully like put into place. But um, we're working on a uh, festival that's going to be focused on um, benefiting like youth empowerment in uh, the Rockland County area. That's actually where I'm from. We are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a festival called the I One Love. Didn't know we were doing it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it works, this is, this is no nobody nobody knows about this. It's yet. not definite. It's, still, it's, not, it's definite. not fully definite. <laughs> but um, we're working on on helping put together the One Love Culture Fest, which is like a festival where essentially we're we're bringing together different cultures, like whether you're African, Haitian or in the Spanish community, we're bringing together all those cultures for a show. So that's something that's still like in the preliminary so phases. So we can look forward to that in the next that, upcoming months, maybe August, next year? Yeah, in the next couple of months. Oh, okay. Yeah. You heard that here, in the next upcoming months, so, by 2020. Right, we're getting ready now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She just found out that she's doing the show. Yeah, just, just found out. <laughs> You've heard it here first. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> and WCB will be like, I definitely heard it here first. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, we're gonna have a now we're gonna do some off topic questions. A okay. lot of your songs is about women. Why is that? And what is your ideal type ideal type of a woman? What do you look for it? Um, what do you look for it to and the personality and the characteristics and somebody that you're interested in? It's like three parts, you can answer it however you want. I would say the the thing that I look for <laughs> <laughs> the the thing that I look you for because I can't see right now. You got Joanne just looking okay. like Bob is mad interested in oh, staring at him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I would say that I look for a girl who is, like, I feel like a lot of people will just talk about, like, looks, 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 looks. But I think for me, it's important for them to be intelligent, educated, um, sophisticated, and um, they have a passion in whatever they're doing. You know what I mean? That, because I feel like people who are passionate, they, it kind of, it rubs off on on you and and it's like a certain energy so um i think definitely a woman who is educated and sophisticated and um they just overall they're a good person and and the vibe is right that's that's what's important to me you heard that he's single he's single you're hearing this right now first yeah yeah you know i am single so you know i'll, I'll leave my number when this thing's over you, know? you can call later after the interview and we're gonna set this up and we stop <laughs> Because you're laughing over there, Joanne. What's your ideal type of a guy? <laughs> you're over here smirking, so we're going to go back to you now. Hey. Um, my ideal type of a guy, uh, I love gentlemen, actually. I love guys that are, like, really sweet and thoughtful that go not the extra mile, but, like, a thousand extra miles <laughs> for you. Um, and, yeah, 
I guess I was just raised Filipino with like a mom and a dad and like my dad treats my mom so well so I kind of look for that in my partner and like a best friend like what they have that was so sweet to touch you <laughs> okay so we're gonna go more into you now who are you Joanne let's go give me a short bio um okay well my name is joanna pauline i was originally born in manila but was raised in queens since about the age of three and the past few years i kind of just started dabbling in entertainment and it turned into the real thing so i started off doing music and using instagram as a platform to kind of build a fan base for my music and that turned into modeling for real. And I've been focusing the past year or two on like strictly just modeling, really building that up, um, getting some really good clients under my belt. And now that everything's a little bit more stable in that world, I'm coming back to the music and putting all the pieces together. Okay, so we already know we got a large following, about um, 40,000 plus. So how is that like helping you and like getting back into music? Because I know right now you said you're focusing more on modeling. So yeah, what connections you got? That's the question. What connections do I have? <laughs> I mean, I got Medici. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> we got, we got New York Performing Arts Academy. So that's a pretty good connection. Um, also, I'm connected to a lot of really amazing individuals like models, influencers that are kind of like artists in their own way too. Everyone's like dabbling in like DJing or like they produce an engineer. Um, and they also have like really big fan bases as well. And I have amazing agents. The list goes on, but I, I think I'm just very grateful to have manifested some really amazing individuals in my life. And we're all kind of able to like work together and create beautiful things and spread like really great vibes okay so how did you get into music originally and what made you was like what point made you like yo i want to do this <laughs> oh my gosh um so i started off doing spoken word poetry um in high school and i think that kind of paved the way into starting to rap so you could rap um. Joanne has got bars. Okay, so you, so you got bars, just, uh, son. He Joanne just, has got bars. So. <laughs> I want to hear you say something now. I need you to split uh, two lines. You can't really say a lot you of got, You got to give him something. It's, I need uh, something. Uh, what about that joint I was spinning in the car? Yeah, yeah. yeah right now, right now? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Hold up, one two one two. Wanna play around? Now you looking like a fool. Got a queen that's on fleek and you dedicated to, but you couldn't sit still. Now the jokes on you. Kings waiting from all these different countries. Wars of dragons fighting head on in the concrete. Knights getting on one knee. Pledge allegiance to the queen. Now you chilling in the dungeon, looking lonely. Keeping water from you cause she know you thirsty. Mad bitches on your lap, but now you're lonely. Yet you're praying for forgiveness, them and I'm no religious, and your rape put you so in the sorrow we all know. Court jester. Got you wishing that you never met her. <laughs> you heard it first. Heard it first here. I, I, I got no words. Okay. That was better than I expected. Okay. <laughs> she got the woke bars. The woke got, bars. Yeah, woke I love bars. woke rap. Yeah. Love it. She got a joint coming. What's it called? Woke now. Yeah. <laughs> Can you please change the title, please? <laughs> I'm sorry. That woke now. The woke is just okay. That they, phrase is overused. Okay. You got, you got fr- to be know. fair, <laughs> that was their idea. <laughs> yeah. You gotta, you gotta speak hey, to the man over here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, what you doing? Right. Come on we, now. We got, well, you need right, to change so, it. Come on. All right. All right. All right. So we. <laughs> she got her first single coming. It's called Woke Now. Um, it's, it's a vibe. And um, it's, it's bars. So when can we look forward to that? Fallish? Oh, sooner than that. Oh, sooner? Yeah. It's going to be like a summerish vibe? Yeah. Summerish vibe, yeah. Mm, okay. I'm going to look forward to it. Come through. I am gonna come through. You never know. I told you, I'm their biggest fan. <laughs> I'm their number one fan. Now you have to come through because you told me you you're coming. Through, so right? I'm gonna be looking for you. Okay, we just gonna we gonna work it out. Okay, work with my people. Your people call my people, and I'll be here. Right. <laughs> I'm 
made it be there sleepy though with some coffee. I'll be there. Listen, your people are my people, so. Yeah. I'm going to say, like, you're very talented. And I could tell that you did spoken word because you got a um, poetry vibe to it. But I think that's the way a graphic is just poetry. That's what I say. Yeah. It's poetry on a beat that's like there. <laughs> okay so what major brands do you like to work with as a model oh my gosh okay um i love 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 working with mac cosmetics um they have been one of my favorite teams that i've worked with so far it's just a team of so many like boss women that are so amazing at what they do working together collaboratively and like a very uplifting environment and we've created like some really amazing magic together and i love working with them <laughs> so what major brand did you shoot for okay uh well i just finished a commercial shoot yesterday with olay so that was pretty fun Mac Cosmetics is one of my main clients. I work with them regularly. I've also worked with Maybelline, Instagram, Clinique. Chanel just recently sent me some stuff in the mail for like social media influencer content creating. Mm. So what Cosmopolitan you, brands like that. What's your dream brand to work with? Oh my gosh. She's already working with them. She's she kind of. <laughs> Are you talking about yourself? Yeah, no, <laughs> I, honestly, like, I kind of, I kind of just let everything happen. Like, Cosmo was definitely up there on the list. Um, that happened. Chanel, I, I, I still can't believe that they sent me stuff in the mail. There was like a handwritten letter and everything. I'm like, this can't oh, you know be real, right? I'm like, I'm, I'm like, this can't be real. So sometimes I'm like pinching myself. Um, but honestly, I want to start working with more foundations as well, uh, so I can really use my platform to make an impact on people's lives. Like, I think beauty is amazing, and it's really good to take care of yourself. And I love all the brands that I work with, but there's also something to be said when you have a platform and you're working with companies like 100 for all where they provide clean water for people that live in like provinces of the philippines um i think when you're put in certain positions if you are able to do something to help you should so i think that is kind of where i'm gonna start putting my eyes to next as well as, you know, working more with, like, Mac and all those brands. Because it's always fun being on set with them. <laughs> you seem like you're really busy. You got a lot in the works. I'm like, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I keep everything with you. He's literally like, one of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life. <laughs> I know he's really hard working. I mean, he's secretive over there. I don't know what's in his mind. Like, I keep it low-key. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. yeah. So when they, I'm just gonna tell y'all. I'm gonna tell them in the room when they drop an album. I'm gonna leak it. Just know. <laughs> okay. All right, so I, I can't send it to you. <laughs> you can't. I'm just joking. I okay. don't know about that. Right, right, right. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna leak I, it I magically see it on some random YouTube link. No, you're going to see it on YouTube link because I'm going to play it in my car. And they're going to be like, why is she dancing like a fool? Because <laughs> I am low key a fool. Low key high key. <laughs> I don't say a fool. I'm eccentric. It's a difference. Okay. So, what type of music do you listen to and like inspires you? What artists? Um, honestly, I listen to a little bit of everything. I grew up in Queens, so it's literally like one of the biggest melting pots in the world. So, growing up, I was influenced with like a lot of R&B, hip hop, jazz, like reggae, a lot of afro beats so um I, I honestly just like love listening to different things i i'm not the type of person that can kind of just like listen to the same thing every single day i go crazy after a day or two of repetitiveness so i'm always exploring and finding new things okay because since you're new here and this your first time here, what was the first album you ever owned um okay honestly Wait, album I've ever owned. We're taking it back to my childhood right now. Here we go to embarrassing questions. It was definitely a Backstreet Boys one. 
and sync is way better okay i was i was a <laughs> i was a backstreet boys fan like i remember when i was younger we had those stereos and i would blast it playing the cd but it was one of those like live tracks so you would hear the crowd cheering and i would be on my bed jumping around singing to every single song and then once the girls would start like screaming i would be screaming with them <laughs> So not only was I singing along to every single member of the band, I was singing along to the crowd. <laughs> Your parents had that patience. If I did that, my mom would have turned off the power. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were they were always working, so I was kind of just like chilling in my room alone. My grandpa was one of the biggest people in my life that actually helped raise me while they were out working and making sure that we all do well in life. Mm. You seem like you get a little bit emotional. You want to tell him something? No. Oh, I mean, yeah. I love. I love my grandpa. You should. You should, you should give him a message right now. Hey, I love you. <laughs> his, so his name is Daddy Got. That's like what we call him. And he's like, I used to be his baby, and now he's my baby. So it's it's really beautiful how life kind of just circles back like that. That was sweet and touching. Sure, simple <laughs> message right there. Love. Okay. And shout out to my mom and dad for all the sacrifices. Definitely. So you got any message for young girls that's trying to like follow in your footsteps or maybe thinking about trying to go the same route as um, as you went? Yes. Always, always, always follow your dreams. Um, no matter who tells you you can't. No matter how impossible you might think it is. And always stay true to yourself. Especially in this society where I guess like everyone's telling you what you should value but a lot of the times those values aren't centered around like family or love it's a lot of times centered around like materialism and like selfishness um and also like embrace yourself like you don't need all that extra stuff to feel beautiful Sometimes the most beautiful women out there are the ones that stay completely natural and have learned to just work with what they have and find ways to really just embrace it and own it. Like that beauty comes from within. It's not an outside thing and the outside reflects your inside. So don't think that you're not beautiful just because you don't have the biggest boobs or the smallest waist or like the biggest butt or a chiseled nose and plump lips like none of that matters that was deep it's true self-love is important yeah okay so what's next for you as an artist mm, definitely woke now um honestly <clears throat> i i've been modeling for so long that I kind of forgot I was doing music for a little bit and I'm I'm really grateful that Ray and like Lungio came in and have really been like helping me get back on track with it. So now we're about to put out Woke Now and it's kind of me re-entering into the music scene. And aside from that, we're gonna start working on a few more singles to kind of like build buzz, really push those. And hopefully I can start working on like my actual project that's super close to the heart with some woke rap in it. Cause I and love you're woke rap. Hit the bars too. Yeah. Bars. Yeah. <laughs> bars, bars, bars. <laughs> you gonna hit the bars? I'm a music video all the way in the back. Come through. <laughs> you can't be saying this stuff and not be there when it happens. All right. Okay. <laughs> we have it on sure. record. If it's not during the okay, if it's during the school year, but it's on the weekend, I will be there. Oh my oh. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you're a senior. You're about to graduate. Yo, These sh- excuses can only last for so long. Sh- I've already got I've already got days. I'm already taking off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay so now we're going like do you have any um records together or any songs in the works projects that y'all going to collaborate together on i want you to talk don't be nodding at me <laughs> <laughs> they cannot hear your nods right so we, we got a couple, we got a couple of joints there's there's honestly so many so it's just figuring out what's the right one to give to the people uh we had a joint called save me that uh, we worked on and this was like wow this is a while back wow save yeah, me yeah are you dying yeah, we got uh, saved. <laughs> um we 
got what else we got? Are we putting that one out? Yeah. I mean, these are all these are all different. We gotta figure out. We, we have right so right much stuff. We have a lot of communication going on. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it's yeah. not that. It's, it's more so because like we've created so much like individually and collectively that it's it's like which ones are we like actually putting, putting out, out there? Yeah, yeah. You know, like every artist that you see, like when they put out an album, those aren't the only songs they've ever made. They've made like fifty songs and took yeah. out a handful and said, "Hey, like this is my work." Yeah, we just freestyled on our way up here, like, <laughs> seven songs that are, like, fire. Like, the Court Jester joint on, like, a trap beat, fire. You know what I mean? Like, we have a bunch of them, so it's just figuring out what's the right one to give to the people. Yeah. So, but yeah, mm. we got some joints. Mm. You're gonna hear them. Can we hear a little bit of Save Me? And hold on, who named <laughs> hey, that title? Hey, <laughs> hey. These are all that was just the, that was on the top of my head. That was that was a um, that was a freestyle joint. That's, yeah, but um, so you gonna freestyle it? That's what I'm hearing. Oh well, that's a sing joint. Oh, so you gonna yeah, sing it? Okay, yeah, let's go. Yeah, Better. Yeah, yeah. We, we need to hear the vocals. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Come on, let me hear something. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna you're gonna hear some joints. You can look forward yeah. to that. We got, we got some things coming. You some, know? Things. Yeah. some things. Some things. Some things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is the focus right now? Um, we'll definitely drop in Woke now. Mm. And then um, just working on our artistry at the school. Acting classes, vocal, dance classes, preparing to tour. So those are all things that we're, we're doing. We're working with um, the academy. And uh, we have a lot, we have a team now that's kind of just helping us take things to the next level. So uh, just focusing on that. Woke now. I have a, I have might have two singles. I might give to you guys before I put out the project. Cool. Um, I'm gonna get it first. A little sneaky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a song. Woke now. You gonna be dropping something? It's just a lot in the works. Yeah. Y'all doing so much. I just can't believe that they got so much in the words. Since last time when we talked, it was like, we got this plan and this plan, and then nothing. No silence, dead silence. I'm just yeah. glad that y'all really moving up and like really like spreading out into different things. Got new artists here. I'm glad that like they found you and they're working with you. Just tell Ray to like maybe need work on his titles. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Listen, oh my God. These titles. All right, all right, all right. I just say it. <laughs> you see, this is what happens when you come And out. I'm not saying no. <laughs> okay. But okay, apparently. Okay, okay. <laughs> so they're going to have a slow walk now. They're yeah, going to have another track called Sleep Now. Oh my God, man. Another track called Been Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I was awake now, I'm tired. (laughs) (laughs) Another one called This Past My Bedtime. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah. Titles in the works. Is that Um, another another uh, title? Is it? (laughs) That's the name of the album, Titles in the Works. Titles in the Works. Coming soon. In the works. In the works. <laughs> See, because like the title is up to your imagination. <laughs> album and the name. way you feel about the singles on the album. You see, I'm good like this. The album's <laughs> name is coming soon. It's out now. <laughs> Only can be found on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> so, who are some of the people that you think deserve to come up here? Um, a lot you- of people. A lot of people, <laughs> definitely. I mean, got Joanna here. We had to bring Joanna, but um, I'm working on some joints with this talented producer on the Medici team. He's actually like our head engineer, um, Bunk. So uh, he's one of the guys, and we have a couple engineers that we're working with. Um, I think a lot of people deserve the opportunity. So it's all about timing. So. So we just gonna do this? Oh, we're gonna be back here, you already know. They're going to come back once. They're going to bring a new artist every six, seven months. Yep, yep. <laughs> Eventually, we're going to meet the whole ten people. You're going you're gonna to meet everybody. There's probably going to be more than ten people uh, at that point. Oh, yeah. Like, we, we, we have people that we're working with in Miami. We growing. Girl. Guy in Miami. North Carolina. L.A. I got family here. L.A. <laughs> yeah. Toronto. Got Everywhere. family out there. Everywhere. Shout out to all my Filipinos that are listening, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. You heard of? Hope y'all listening. She's representing. Yeah. For the culture. Mm-hmm. So, 
any final thoughts? Because we're coming to the closing of this interview, which was a lovely time. I mean, you got any other questions for us? I don't even know. Some, some fun stuff. stuff. Some fun yeah, stuff. Yeah. Some fun stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um. Go off. <laughs> hey. Why are you giving me all this go, power? Uh, go. Uh-oh. Go. Well, this is your. This is your domain. Right? This is my domain. Yeah. Wow. It's your so interview. We're, we're here. We're in Hogwarts. You call the <laughs> shots right yes. now, girl. Okay. So, um. Hmm. We're going to talk more about you, Joanne. Okay, so when you was younger, what was your job? Like, when people like occupation, when you was younger, what did you want to be? When I was younger? I mean, how old do you think I am? <laughs> like, how like mid teens. Mid teens? Uh, well, my first job ever um, actually was helping out with my mom at a dental clinic. She used to be a manager there. So I started off as like a filing clerk. Um, <laughs> sorting out all the files and stuff i never thought i would get into entertainment like i never thought i'd be a model i never thought i'd be doing music i was honestly supposed to be a doctor i was studying bio pre-med at st john's initially so like this is all a completely new different world for me you just said bio and i just like i love that was actually my favorite subject i could never do chemistry (laughs) which is necessary for a bio major but like bio is fun Okay, I'm nerding out, aren't I? I don't like bio. Bio was fun, so those 8 a.m. classes was fun. Okay. It was was really interesting seeing how everything works and connects with each other. Um, I feel like once you really understand how things work, you're able to make decisions and you can learn how to maneuver and even just, like, recognize certain things. And I don't think I would be able to see the world in the way that I do if it weren't for the fact that I had such a heavy science background. So you could say your science background, it's like it affected you and you learn, you took away skills that's helping you now in your new direction of the career that you're going into. For sure. Um, I, I think this direction that I've been kind of going with um, involves a lot of like reflection and understanding just how the world in general works. Um, so when you kind of put everything into perspective, you start seeing that it's all connected and it's given me a very philosophical outlook mixed with like the scientific and like the spiritual, I don't know. I am also a really big nerd. So <laughs> you're a big nerd. I'm a nerd too. What's up? Okay. Yeah. Hey, shout out to all the smart people listening. That intellect. Ooh. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she was good. Did she know? <laughs> Story of my yeah. life. Kidding. Okay. So what was your moment. first modeling gig? Oh, uh, my first first, like my first real one. Um, probably champion. Yeah, that was, like, my first big brand that I worked with. It was for um, a fashion show slash music event with Ralph McDaniels. Shout out to Uncle Ralph, who actually invented the term shout outs. Um, And we had Champion as our head designer. And I did runway for them, and we did... um, a print shoot afterwards and that was like super cool i was still heavy in the underground scene um and yeah they were they were a cool brand we were like throwing bags into the crowd it was fun so what brands you wear a lot that you may not model for um i don't know i kind of so i i like to travel a lot um and i'm really big on sentimental things so whenever i travel somewhere i like to bring back something from the place that i was so i love going to different places and like finding a dress and like it could be a random boutique hole in the wall and i'm just like i like this and i'll bring it back with me so where you been where's the places you traveled because it seemed like you traveled a lot so where's Um, some of the places let's go drop some drop some names okay well definitely the philippines it's definitely one of the most beautiful places i've ever been to in my life if you ever go you definitely have to check out palawan they have giant limestone cliffs and underground rivers and reefs that are still alive which is honestly a rare commodity in today's day and age um 
so Philippines, Palawan, Boracay, Bohol. Uh, I've traveled around Canada, Quebec, around Christmas time, which is super beautiful because it turns into this Christmas town covered in snow. It's it's gorgeous. Um, Vancouver. I love DR. I feel like it reminds me of the Philippines, but like a closer to New York version. And I have all my Dominican friends, so they're super cool. Saint Lucia. I don't know, like mostly U.S. Caribbean, Philippines, Canada. I haven't been to Europe yet, so that's like next on my list. I'm so jealous right now. Come through, let's go. Okay. Let's travel. Let's do it. Explore so the where world. Ray, where you traveled? Favorite spot, hands down, Milan. <sighs> See, yes. I'm jealous. Why? Because everybody's just so well dressed. It makes me <laughs> want to level up. <laughs> 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 no, but I, I really like Milan. I, I like the, the countryside. When I went there, like about, I think I went in, a, in September. That was dope. They're just people were nice. The, uh, the scenery around the countryside, everybody being well dressed, the nightlife. Um, I've been to Amsterdam. Amsterdam was dope. The vibes out there. Um, everybody was on a bike. It was. It was just a. It was a different experience and kind of just getting to see how other people live on the other side of the world. So, um, Florida. I'm in Miami all the time. I, I love Miami. Um, oh. Canada, I'll be going up there as well. I'll be, I'll be up in in and out of Canada. I have family out there, so. Mm. That is traveling, okay. Mm. Place I've been Brooklyn, Harlem, <laughs> <laughs> Staten Island. Hey, that is culture. <laughs> Maine. Wait. I don't know about Staten Island though. Staten Island culture. Staten Island. Uh, yeah, I like Staten Island. Yeah. I like I've been Staten in the U.S. Island. Okay. Yeah, That's they, 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 they have they got, they got, bakeries over they, there. They got some bakeries. Yeah. You know. Really good uh, Italian crowd. No. Yeah. Been to Louisiana, Alabama. Shout out to my family that's down there. What's up? Hey yo. <laughs> okay, so um, hmm, other questions I'm thinking about. So when are y'all gonna perform for Albany? Let's go. Let's go. We gonna do a concert here. When do you want us to pull up? When do y'all want to pull up? Mm-hmm. I could put this in the works. Let's do it. We're gonna come out here. Mm. You put it in the works, so we'll be out here. Yeah. Mm. Just last, tell us when, we'll be here. Last time we were out here, I think it was last year, we did like a special performance. They had that dance competition. And then we did a, we did like a Yo Mama. I did my joint lifestyle. Chris actually pulled up with the, um, yeah, the dancers too. So we'll be out here. Mm. Chris pulled up. He didn't pull up today. Mm. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's more yeah. to Medici. Yeah. That just me being petty. <laughs> yeah. Side note. Y'all didn't see my hair flip, but I totally <laughs> hair flipped that. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, this is why I'm not allowed in public. <laughs> yes, this is why. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> what, what was the Drake line? Hide, hide in the my hide in you from the world. <laughs> I just remembered this is being recorded by video too. <laughs> you worried about video? This is live. Oh, this is live. Uh, yeah, this is live. Oh. Yeah. Hi guys. To the means, the means of the listeners oh. that may be listening to this foolishness going on right now. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Somebody take her mic away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> hmm. I want you to describe where you see yourself in like five words where you see yourself going in the future. Five words. Five words for both of y'all. Eighty-two thousand people. In the stands. That's that's a lot of people. It's MetLife. I live right next to MetLife, so I've always wanted to pack it out. What was the question again? Five (laughs) words. (laughs) Where do you see yourself? But you counted six. Yeah. Your fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why you gotta? I can't be saying. No, I didn't mean to do that. I'm just confused because I don't know what to say. Okay. So 82,000 like, people. So that should be a goal to go to MetLife and perform. Well, there, um, Tokyo, I want to perform. 
Paris, really around the world. I'm gonna go on tour. I'll be there backstage, like, Whoa! let me stop. <laughs> I'm the number one fan. Okay. Yeah, that's what we've been prepping for. So it's time to take it to that next level. Mm. It's a lot. Let's do it. Mm. Okay, your five words for the future. A little way you see yourself going. Mm-hmm. Can I just like say two? You can say two and a half. <laughs> uh, I think the best words would be manifest reality. Just kind of create the life that you envision for yourself and letting it all come and being open to receiving it. Mm, that was that was better than those five words. I think those were really great. <laughs> five, six words. That was, that was I, so. I gave you guys the reality, and she told you what I was doing, yeah. manifesting it. Yeah, well, I mean that's all that life ever really is. You think and say things, and they come into existence. So you're gonna speak it into existence now. You're gonna be performing at the Met Life, and I'm gonna be there in the front row. No, I'm not. I'm backstage because yeah, I'm you're special. Backstage. Come I'm backstage. On. Mm. Good day you have you have stage pass. That's that's if you, you on that's the if stage you can watching. make it because you might be on air for Hot ninety seven. So right, who knows? If you, you have a busy schedule, so. What do you talking about? I'm gonna Facetime in. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> we'll put you on the projector. Oh nah, I'll yeah. be ugly. No, you don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, don't say that about yourself. <laughs> I love myself. I love all of y'all. I'm glad y'all came in today and y'all was here letting me get the exclusive about Joanne. You're very nice. I enjoyed talking to you. You're a little bit crazy. Um, <laughs> but you're fun, Ray. It's always great to see one another, you know, talking. We're going to have to link up, you know, so I could be in these music videos. In the back, though, because y'all not going to see me. Dancing. Like, <laughs> you dance like, I'm going to be in the video, but you're going to have to pause it at a specific moment. You. Like, you have to be like two minutes and 31 seconds, and I'm like, I'm okay. right there. <laughs> Slightly blurred in the yeah. background, so you're like, zoom in and put like a red circle around your face. Yeah. No, but the girl you next to you us. actually kind of looks like you, so you circle the wrong face. <laughs> That's where I'm gonna be at. I'm like, I'm right that that blur right there. You're gonna, you're gonna get the That's invite. Me. You will be. In. Uh, so you got any final words to leave us with? Final words. Thank you for having us, Thank Albany. You. Um, I'm an alumni. It's only right that I do right by my school and make sure the whole world knows about Albany. Albany's Thank a great you for place. having me. Today is a great day to be a great day. <laughs> it is a great day. Yeah, I love all the green. I love money too. Hello. <laughs> I'm in the nature, but hey, <laughs> whatever works, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you got any final thoughts? Any words of inspiration? You know, we're gonna leave on a positive note. Um, honestly, I'm I'm just grateful for being here. So, thank you for having us. This is a really amazing experience. I want to thank all of y'all for coming. You know, I'm just I feel so. I don't know. I'm just choked up, though, because, you know, like, y'all are really the only big music group that I really um, be interviewing. So I just feel really honored that y'all thought about me and y'all giving me the platform to explain um, my network. So I appreciate y'all a lot. Appreciate y'all coming up here because it is a journey. And I'm going to wish y'all the best in the future. I'm going to be backstage in the music videos. You already know. And everything y'all do, hope y'all do it well. And if you just always welcome to come back and, you know, stop by. Like, we're family. Mm-hmm. And and I want to thank a uh, videographer that's recording. Y'all can't see him. We're going to thank him, though, because he woke up to, to be here. So Shout out, Claudio. Claudio Gomez. The GOAT. The GOAT. Mm-hmm. You want to say something, Claudio? Nah, I'm good. I appreciate it, Shadow. <laughs> Claudio looks like he should be riding a motorcycle. (laughs) (laughs) Gonna have a Claudio appreciation post. Claudio looks like he's riding a motorcycle. He should be riding a motorcycle. He he does this for a living. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay. And this is your homegirl DJ Peaches. You you wanna shout out some more? We do some shout outs. Uh, I was just saying shout out to all the creatives. You know. Who you wanna shout out? Shout out to all the artists that. Shout out to all the artists that think it's possible because it is. Mm, definitely is. Mm, shout out to all my dreamers, believers. You can make this happen. And you just got to believe, you know, put hard work in and speak everything into existence. All so the from lovers. Like, 
eight years from yeah. now, I may be at high ninety seven with Flunk Master Flex. Hey, <laughs> you will be. You I already will said be. it. I already said it. You gonna put you, this into you effect? You are what you think. So we gonna sign off with your homegirl DJ Peaches. You're listening to WCDB Albany ninety point nine FM, and we had the music guest Medici and Joanna, and they came here. They talked. They spoke. Ray Medici. Oh, okay. Ray Medici. <laughs> Ray Medici. I stand. Oh <laughs> you got to put that in bold print. 72. <laughs> size. Exclamation point. Ray Medici. I stand corrected. Okay. Anyway. Um, thank y'all for listening. Y'all can tune in next year. I'm going to be on air Wednesdays from 10 to 12. Eccentricity with DJ Peaches. And I'm signing off. Bye. Bye. <laughs>